migration and its effects on the Nigerian economy. When the best of us leave, who will help the rest of us? Data strongly suggests that the primary reason for immigration is employment. Unemployment rate, however, in Nigeria is projected to reach the 3% in 2022. This is a minimum of 0.5 increase from last year, 2021. It then begs the question, even more people are leaving every year, primarily for economic reasons. Why are more people then unemployed every year? The answer is simple. The solution to unemployment is not to be found externally, but internally. Migration itself is nothing new. It's a centuries-old phenomenon. People always move for a myriad of reasons, including security, economic benefits, etc. Young talents who are mostly in IT, professionals, doctors, nurses, engineers, auditors, and accountants, among others, are leaving the country due to the current harsh economic realities. Insecurity and poor governance as well. Skilled labor is suffering. There are many cases of banks who have struggled for months because of lack of proper IT personnel, resulting in a rise in failed transactions. Both private and government hospitals have cried out at the massive outflow of their nurses who are in high demand in hospitals abroad, with juicy pay and benefits. For the United Economy Loan, Study visas, also known as student visas, has increased by 222.8%. That's three twos, 222, 222.8% to 65,929 in June 2022, from 20,427 in the same period last year. The brain drain goes on. It doesn't have to be a grim situation all through anyways. The exit of some is now creating job opportunities which once did not exist here. Now companies are beginning to recruit much more and even reduce their conditions for recruitment, e.g. in some audit firms. You can now write the aptitude test more than once if you don't pass the first time. Age restrictions have now been moved up. After all, not everyone has the resources to migrate. Now, people left will need to upskill themselves to get ready for these positions they're applying for. However, truth be told, something has to be done to preserve the skilled labor in Nigeria from drastically affecting economic growth and development. The government and private sector must partner to ensure that an enabling environment is created for all industries and sectors. Because as I said at the beginning, when the best of us leave us, who will help the rest of us? This is kind of a continuation, a sequel to what Victor said earlier. Um, the concept of Jakba, I, I was going through the news yesterday and I saw that um, the statistics have it that in the UK, the Chinese are more has the highest number of uh, student uh, migrants, followed by India, then mm -hmm. third is Nigeria. But guess what? The Nigerians has the highest number of dependents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Chinese, the students coming from China to study mm -hmm. in the UK, mm -hmm. virtually have little or no dependents, yeah. followed by mostly people. single people. Yeah, mostly single. But in Nigeria, they will go, they go with their wife, if they are mm -hmm. married, or go with their sister or their brother, or even their parents. Or possible. go with their husband sometimes. Yeah. Even, even their parents, if possible. talked about you know, the, the, the issue of, see, the, there's nothing wrong about, uh, let me not use the word Jakwa, migration. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a difference between Jakwa and migration. You know, you said something about migration in the last uh, show we had two weeks ago, and you said something mm -hmm. about, you should be able to go to Senegal or Singapore, do your business, study, come back, learn from them, come and implement it here. But Jackpot is a problem in the sense that you're going with the mindset that there's nothing good at home. Let's leave. We're not coming back. Maybe if we come back, we'll come back as visitors. Mm. And just like you rightly said, the solution is not out there. It's internal problem. If that country, I bet you, if that country they're migrating to has degenerated to a similar problem here, they will leave that place on that place. So I, I'm not going to blame them. I'm not here as a morality police to mm. police their minds and their conscience and say, don't leave Nigeria. We are seeing that the government stakeholders should be serious. And how can they be serious when their children go abroad to study? When they even go there for health care? When some of them even live abroad? Like the popular politicians that lives in a, in a certain country and comes back home every four years to contest. Mm. Wow. <laughs> it's okay. You do Google that's search. That's a T. Google <laughs> Just Google search. That's, that, that's silent T. <laughs> But I think um, we've had this conversation in many forums and over and over. Migration is not new. We've had, we have people in the 80s who have left, people who left Nigeria in the 60s who went to school abroad and came back. 
My parents left in 78 and came back to Nigeria in 85. But that will not happen to most of the people living now. Mm. Most of the people living now are living and never coming good. back. In fact, some of them are not even coming back to visit. <laughs> And then the, if you're unfortunate and you go and you have to return, it then brings a whole different set of issues. Because like what happened to my parents, for example, eight children, four live in America, four live in Nigeria. I haven't seen one of my sisters since 1999. Wow. Physically. This is what is going to physically. We see Zoom, we see phone calls, mm -hmm. we do WhatsApp, you know, and all of that. But she got married. I wasn't at her marriage. You know, so much happens that we then lose out on. You see parents who are in the village who would never see some of their grandchildren mm -hmm. ever, ever because they're never going to come to Nigeria. And that's what's going to continue to happen. How long can we continue to allow this to happen? The government really needs to sit up, really needs to make this place livable and make Nigeria attractive so that Nigerians isn't, Nigeria is not attractive to Nigerians. Mm. Anyone that has the opportunity to leave, and I say that almost everyone who has the opportunity to leave this country will take it. Even those ones that don't have the opportunity have left. They are seizing the opportunity. Exactly. People are struggling and trying to make the opportunity to leave. But yeah. if the opportunity just falls in your lap, you leave. But you don't have that in other countries. There are Americans who have never been out of America, who have no yeah, desire to leave their country, yeah. who don't want to see anything of the world. Anything they see on TV is enough for them. But here, everyone that has the opportunity to leave will jump at it. Let me add to what you just said. There is this case, I don't know that you followed news yesterday. I was watching news yesterday and um, they were interviewing some Nigerian students from the Nigerian uh, Marine Time something related to the massa mm -hmm. I, I can't get the exact name there now these people uh they were alleging that they were sent on an exchange course mm -hmm. for four years in the philippines mm -hmm. and they've exceeded their time there they've risen their exams and, and the mm -hmm. government has refused and the, all the relevant agencies and stakeholders including the government have refused to pay their fees and whatever. they couldn't access the embassy here. they couldn't allow they, them to access the embassy to the nigerian embassy there for them to just come and plead their kids and they're nigerians now, and they're nigerians just imagine tomorrow those kind of people maybe somehow the government become lenient and decide to help them you think they will come back yeah. and yeah. these are the people you sent to go and let so that they will come and, and come and help from, yeah. the system no, they can't they're not calling it is victor yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a very you know first it's, it's important to say that nigeria can and will work again. It is my personal belief. It is my personal resolve. I believe in Nigeria. Um, however, we're losing the middle class because when you think about it, mm -hmm. the idea that somebody has to relocate, you know, is a certain level of struggle at another level. So it's not a struggle that is um that is connected to the masses when i say the masses the you know the lower middle class the lower class right but the middle class are saying okay you know what we want greener pastures you know but most of them are still struggling to live i'm going to think about the elites right there are some elites that have not left the country mm -hmm. you know they have i mean two passport but they are still coming in when you look at the, our you know um, um and, and people in the entertainment industry are actors our musicians, you know, why are they still here? That, it means there's a lot of untapped opportunities. And that piggybacks to, you know, leadership, right? If things are working really, why should we have that massive exodus, mm -hmm. right? So if we can get things to work, then it will not be that, okay, I want to go and work in this country. Like I said earlier, I should be able to go and work in Dakar and live in Dakar for three months and move to you know busing and go to chicago you know and things like that but the truth is um people are leaving because they don't want to come back again and it piggybacks to let's fix our leadership yes. absolutely agree absolutely agree um because i mean you know there's the you're about saying that adjoli dabili you know it just basically means that a strange land can never be like home but mm. you know the sad reality is looking like um, home is no longer what it used to be. 
you know, so Adri is beginning to look more like Attractive. the best option. Mm -hmm. I know they say the grass is green on the other side, looks green on the other side, but that's because you don't water your grass. Mm -hmm. Clearly, we just need to water this grass, you know, so that it's more attractive to our people. Yeah, the end always seems to come too soon on the advocate. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate ng on twitter and instagram at plus tv africa hashtag the advocate ng to catch up with previous broadcasts go to plus tv africa.com slash the advocate ng don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel plus tv africa till next week same time on this station let's keep advocating for a better society bye <laughs>